That was beautiful. Did you like that? I did like that. What I just played has absolutely nothing to do with today's show, but I thought I'd play it anyway. It was very nice. Did you like that? Mm, hey did. guys, welcome to That Powder Show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. So, we have been asked for this and asked for this, and I have wrestled it within my brain to try and work out a way to best show this to you guys. And it's a difficult concept to get across, but it's essential. Mm. So today we're talking about power, okay? Hopefully, by the end of this video, we'll have covered some concepts, but if you only watch the first five minutes, we're gonna get across the essential things you need to know. I think, do you think we could do the essential things you need to know in one minute? Okay, let's go. Okay, so it says 2.30 on the audio recorder. Yep. Let's go, number one. Number one, voltage, right? So understanding what voltage your pedals require, right? Generally, the pedals that we use are nine volts, but they can range anything from nine to 24 volts. Very important that you get the voltage right. Two. Current. Current. So the current is the amount of power that your pedal requires. There are low current pedals and high current pedals. If you've got a, um, and we measure this in milliamps, okay? So analog pedals generally take low current. So these, the king of tones we have here might be taking around between 14, 18 milliamps. Whereas something like the timeline here, which is a digital pedal, will take like 300 milliamps. So the current is the amount of power that is, is drawing. And three, polarity, okay. We have two basic sorts of voltage. We have AC and DC, okay? <laughs> Very good. Most of the pedals that we use are DC volts. DC has a negative and a positive, all right? AC, which stands for alternating current, goes back and forward, back and forward, okay? So it doesn't have a negative and positive like, like we have on the DC pedals. We have a negative, zero volts, and a positive, which is at nine volts, or the positive is at 18 volts, or 24 volts, whatever that pedal is rated voltage-wise, that's where the positive is. Does that make sense? It does make perfect sense. There you go. But for the vast majority of st stomp boxes, yes. they're usually DC. Usually DC. Center Absolutely. negative. Center negative, okay. So this is the polarity. We're doing polarity, aren't we? We are and doing I didn't polarity. even get to that important we've, bit. We've totally oh, failed. We've totally we've... failed on one minute, but that's okay, okay because this is all useful stuff. Right, so polarity, we have positive and negative, okay? The negative on a DC supply is, it will generally be at, at zero volts, and then we have the positive, which is at whatever voltage the pedal runs at. Then we've got the plug, generally 2.1 millimeter, center negative, which means the negative, that zero volts, is connected to the center pin, and the positive volts is connected to the outside pin, which is, in my opinion, a design flaw that happened from very early on, but that's what we're stuck with, people. <gasps> okay, and uh, we, we don't wanna get into the habit of putting diagrams on screen because it just takes ages oh, and my God. God. Anyway, whatever. We're gonna show you a polarity diagram now that's gonna go here. Dun, dun, dun. And we've shown you a center negative polarity diagram and you can see why it's center negative from the diagram, right? Yes, yes you can. You can see it clearly, concisely, brilliantly. <laughs> so eventually our one minute's turned into about four minutes, but three things when you're uh, sorting out your power for your pedals, the very basics thereof, VCP, let's call it VCP, right? Everyone loves an acronym. V. V. <laughs> v. Voltage. C. Current. P. Polarity. Great, and there will, there will have been some things on screen to uh, explain that as well. So those are the three things you really need to get right in order to power your pedals. Yes. So voltage, you need to make sure that the power supply is the correct volts for your pedals. Current, you need to make sure that the power supply will supply enough current to all of your pedals. So as a rule of thumb, add up all the milliamps that your pedals will draw, multiply that by two, and your power supply needs at least that amount of current draw available. Yeah, so if, you're, if you've got four overdrive pedals and they're all 
pulling about 20 milliamps each. Yep. Every power supply in the world is going to be able to do that. However, yes. if you've got two overdrive pedals, a, couple, a timeline, a big sky, then you need something more. You do. Because then you're into, let's say, f well, 50 each for those, 400 for that, is it? Did yeah, we already but three, say that? Yeah, but 300, 300, 300, so you need to allow yeah. 600. You do, that's right. You've got two of those, therefore you're into 12. You, you're, you're into one amp's worth of power that's requirement. Right. The reason being, if you have a standard 9 volt supply, right, and it's, uh, it's rated at 1,000 milliamps, by the time that 9 volt supply is actually putting out 1,000 milliamps, that voltage has dropped way down right. to 7 volts. You know, it's really oh, taking okay. a nose dive. But at half its current draw, at 500 milliamps, it's rock solid oh, I didn't at know 9 that. volts. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah. And the, the, the other thing to bear in mind is that not all of the outputs on that power supply are capable of giving you that 1 milliamp either. So, absolutely. So, 1,000 milliamps. It all, Sorry, yeah. Yeah. One amp. One milliamp should be fine. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this is where we get into, um, th there are lots of power supplies available, okay? As long as the, uh, you know, you have those bricks and the bricks have a um, certain amount of current available on each output. Yeah. All right? Um, so you need to be able to match those up to your pedals. If you, if you try and power a timeline, from an output that's only got 150 milliamps, it's not going to work. Yeah, you've got to make sure that you've got enough current on the particular output for the particular pedal. Very, very important. Can be surprising as well, isn't it? Because you you can spend quite a lot of money on like I have a T Rex um, Chameleon, mm -hmm. uh, and you'd think you know that's not a cheap power supply. Yep. Forget it for the timeline. Yep. It's only got a maximum of 300 milliamps per per output. So, and for your pedals to sound the way that they were designed to sound. They need, the most important thing is the power. Yeah. If, you, if you don't get that right, forget about everything else. Yeah, and I guess that's where we're moving on to. That's where we're moving on to. So VCP, voltage, current, polarity. Yes, to get you started. Get your voltage right. Make sure you've got enough current by yes. adding up all the uh, milliamps your pedals require and then double it. And then make sure you've got the right polarity. Very good. On each of the outputs. Nice. Okay, something that have, we've been asked a lot is why are our rigs so quiet? And the power goes a very long way to making sure that you have a nice quiet rig. The way we do that is the fourth one, which delves a little bit deeper, that's isolation. Ah, Vic P. Vic P. <laughs> Vic P. I, I knew him. Vic P. He was cool, he couldn't, couldn't handle his booze though. <laughs> so, Vic P. <laughs> so it's uh, volume inductance. No. Yeah. Right. Vic P. Isolation. What isolation does? It's like imagine you've got four overdrive pedals, and each of those overdrive pedals. I can imagine that. You can imagine that. Doesn't take much. No. Imagining. No. So imagine each pedal is being powered by a battery, its own battery. Yep. Okay, it has its own power source. That is giving the pedal the best power that it can get because the power is isolated from the other pedals. Yeah. Now, if you plug in a daisy chain, what's happening is each of those pedals is sharing the supply that's coming down that daisy chain. Now, it's not the end of the world. Daisy chains have been around for a long time and they can work great. The issue with daisy chains is that you can get earth loops between the pedals. The other issue is that things can get noisy mm. when you chain the earths from the power to all the pedals down the chain, okay? Especially when we're talking about digital pedals. Yeah, and anyone who's been through power problems on their board and you plug it all in, you switch it all on and something's going ee, and then you mysteriously unplug one of the DC jacks and all of a sudden the noise goes away. Yeah. That's exactly what's happening there. So I'm going to show you that now. Okay. Oh goody! Right. So, noise. Noise. I'm going to get a sound with a lot of gain. Okay. Yep. So if we, let me just go here, we'll turn on both the Kings of Tone. Um, 
All right, that's a lot of gain there, okay? Now at the moment, the timeline is being powered by a little Time Lord here, which is a little isolated adapter. If I unplug the timeline and now power it from, uh, it's, so that it's no longer isolated. It's not, yeah, it's coming straight off the supply. Yeah, yeah you get this. You hear that? Now, yeah. So, what's happening there is there's a lot of, within digital pedals... So it's getting enough current. It's getting enough current. Because no problem with the, current. Um, the generator puts out, what, 5 amps or something crazy, yeah, is it? 5,000 milliamps. So okay. a huge amount of current. So it's, there's enough current there, the right polarity, but it's now no longer isolated. It's sharing its um, power with uh, G2 and with it with Loopy2. So it's no longer isolated from everything else. Yep. And what happens with digital pedals is they they dump a lot of noise onto the ground. Okay. Right? Which is when you, again, if I now unplug this and isolate it. Noise goes away. There we go. Right. right. So I know there's probably not much more we need to say on isolation, is no. there? Because there it is. There it is. And if you've, again, I'll say it again, if you've got all your pedals plugged in on a daisy chain and we've all done this and there's just this hum and something is humming, that's probably why. Yes. One question we did get asked actually in, in the comments uh, from the YouTube videos, and I apologise, I can't remember who answered the question, asked the question, but we've been asked it many times. Is it important that all your pedals are, are isolated or do you just need to isolate the, the digital ones? As a rule of thumb, isolate everything. So there's no downside to isolating everything? Not in the slightest. Right. If you can isolate everything, is that is the best case scenario, yep. everything isolated. If for whatever reason you can't isolate everything, if you need to share the supply, you know, light gain overdrives are good, um, but nothing that produces huge amounts of gain. Yeah. Um, some modulation stuff, it can be can be fine on the shared supply, but as a general rule, it's not worth yeah. risking noise. Because the other thing that's really strange about power is that I can have you, you see the power that the noise that we got then from the timeline, timeline wasn't even on. Right. Right? We didn't even wow. have that loop activated. Okay. That was simply the noise that was pumped onto ground being picked up by the gain. Yeah. In the overdrive pedals. Yeah. Okay. So you can have noise happening at the end of your signal chain, but what happens is when you turn on your overdrive pedal, it becomes noisy. You because think, the power links it. Exactly. In. And you think, uh, oh, my, okay. my, my overdrive pedal's noisy. It's not the overdrive pedal at all. It's actually happening elsewhere. So then it becomes complicated. Easiest thing, isolate everything. Get it isolated. You have no problems. Yeah. 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 There we go. There we go. Okay. So. The next question we get asked a lot is, what's the difference between powering my pedals at different voltages? Now, this is a fascinating thing. Um, so you've all seen pedals that on the back, generally they've got you know nine volt DC input. Some pedals have nine to 18 volts. Should we just issue the health warning at this point? We're gonna issue the health warning. Under no circumstance should you try this if you don't know for absolute 100% certainty that your pedal can take a higher voltage. Yeah. If you plug in a higher voltage into a pedal that can't take it, you will destroy the pedal. Don't I've, do it. I've done it. <laughs> Me too. Right? I've seen the smoke. <laughs> I've smelt the burning capacitors. It is just the most horrid thing. I did it on a Charlie Brown. Did you? Yeah. Oh man. Very sad, completely by mistake. Right. Because I had an 18 volt supply there for something else. <laughs> that's, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. What's that smell? Yeah. So. Don't do it. Yeah. You need to make sure that the pedal can take it. Okay. So to demonstrate this, first way we're going to demonstrate it, we've got, we've got not one but two kings of tone here. <laughs> What's the plural of the king of tone? Kai of... <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay, I've got one set up at 9 volts, and I've got one set up at 18 volts. We've, um, we've set them internally exactly the same, yep. so uh, none of which really matters. They're both in the standard... When you get, when you get it from Analog Man, it's in the standard setting. Correct. Okay, so we are using... Today we're using the Victory uh, Sheriff 44 and the Massive Boogie Line Style. Clean sound. I love this combination. It's really l l lush. Okay, so that's the amps. Here is the King of Tone set up at nine volts. Here is the King of Tone set up exactly the same on 18 volts. I hope that comes through on the audio. I keep, I always say this in videos. I hope it comes through on the audio as clearly as it does in the room. Chalk and cheese. Yes. Now, because the way that Mike has designed these pedals, he's designed it to work with the power supply. Okay. The, so what's happening there, we are talking about polarity before, we are talking about having our zero volts and our nine volts. And what happens is we have our sine wave, the, 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 the signal from the guitar, which is AC. No diagrams here. No diagrams here. Literally watch, no idea how Watch to do the that. hands, people. Watch the hands. So here is zero volts. Here is zero volts. Here is nine volts. And our guitar is coming in like this. Now, what happens with an overdrive pedal when we compress the signal? It goes up. It hits the top of the the, the range. Compresses there, and so squares off the top. It goes down the bottom. Hits that. I won't touch you. Don't touch me. Squares, squares on the bottom. <laughs> and that's how it compresses. Now, if we increase that range from 9 to 18 volts, we have a lot more. And no, you stay there. Stay 0 volts. Oh, uh, okay. Right? That would be AC. Right, anyway. So we go from 9 to 18, and we have a lot more headroom. Yeah. Okay? That's what's happening when we increase yes. the, the voltage from 9 to 18 volts. Now. What a different... I mean... What a blooming difference. What a blooming difference. And we don't have it here. Are we going to talk about SAG? When you when you starve the pedal of voltage? We can't, so that's the, it's other, the same that's, thing. That's the opposite, exactly. Yeah. That is reducing the yeah. headroom. And so it becomes more compressed. You know. Certain power supplies have that feature in where you can essentially starve the pedal slightly yeah. of voltage. And it's what happens when you when a battery starts to go flat in, exactly. in the pedal and it starts to compress more and all of that. So yeah. I, I, I don't think there's much need to demonstrate that. You can get it because it's the opposite effect of what just happened. Exactly, exactly. So uh, I thought, now we've done that with the overdrive pedals. Yeah, can I just hear it with a Strat? Of course you can. Just the difference between the two um, analog man there. I mean, yep. that was the... the yeah, okay, so. So this is the nine volts. So you hear it's not just making it louder, it compresses completely different. This, the, the, the 9 volt pedal, it doesn't have that spanky top end because it's compressing differently. Yeah. Whereas the, the louder pedal, it's not just a volume increase, it's just not compressing as much. It's, so so f the practical application of that is if you've got an overdrive pedal and it, uh, an overdrive pedal that can do it, if when you play you find the overdrive pedal is a bit small, yep. kind of seems a bit compressy, 
and you want, as exactly happened there, a little bit more definition out of your Strat clean tones mm -hmm. or cleaner tones, and you've got a pedal that can do it, full tone, full drive, yep. OCD, OCD, king of tone, and there are others, please check, please check, please check. Running at 18 volts is just gonna give you that. Yeah. Can we, just out of interest, match the volume of the nine volt pedal? So you can hear the difference. So, yes, because call. I can hear the comments in YouTube land screaming, well, it's just because it's louder. the pedal set louder. Yep. Let's set them to exactly the same volume, okay. so. <laughs> There's definitely left less compression in the 18 volt pedal, yep. and sounds to me like wider frequency response as yeah, well. well it's, yeah, because wider dynamic range. Yep, yeah, exactly. It's, and that is what happens. That's it what it is. Compress it's compressed much. Hmm. I must say, still, just one of my favourite overdrive pedals ever. It just, <laughs> what you know, Mike. You know, round of applause for Mike. Um, so yeah, um, so for the guys that don't know, uh, Analog Man is Mike Piera, operates out of uh, North Connecticut, and he's been making these for years now. There is a, a massive waiting list for them. We're not helping that waiting list, I know, but there we go. Awesome thing. Right, okay, so that was the overdrive pedals. I want to have a quick look at chorus, okay? So uh, again, I have the analog man chorus because because I know this takes 18 volts. Yeah. Okay. So if we get you set up on uh, just a clean sound. Beautiful. Now I'm going to put 18 volts into that. Keep going. Definition, clarity. And the chorus got stronger too. Yeah. There was yeah. more chorus. Yeah. Because it's not more chorus. Yeah. It's it's one of those things. It again it all depends on the pedal. For example, the pedal design, if it has a regulator, a voltage regulator inside, that regulator might be able to take anything from 9 to 20 volts, and it changes the, the voltage internally. So those pedals, it won't make any difference whatsoever the voltage that you put in it. I mean um, until you blow it up. Until you blow it up, yeah, yeah. yeah. But don't do it, don't do it. Exactly, but what Mike has done is he's designed this so that you can find the voltage that you like. I mean, personally, so that's done at 18 volts. For me, I love these at 15 volts. I think they just, I mean, that's cork sniffing, guys, but that's, that's how you he, can get. Just for the record, he did actually just say that. <laughs> My favorite voltage for the Analog Man. Hey, Matt, um, you haven't, you haven't been doing this all these years. To not be tweaky about it, no, have you? Let's be honest. This is true. Okay, so but it's a very clear difference. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Chalk, I, I've I've done it with overdrive pedals all the time. Never done it with modulations and other other kinds of pedals. And that was even just from that short demo. Yeah. Huge difference. Huge difference. Uh, we can try it with a compressor. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to play. Oh, so that does it too. Does it? Does it as well? Okay. This is actually this is really interesting. <clears throat> So that's it, we're at 9 volts. We will do some overdrive in a minute, but uh, it was nice to have some clean. This is it at 18 volts. More dynamic range. That's it. Yeah. Exactly. So 
it is really worth experimenting with this stuff. If your pedals can take a different voltage, it's a great thing to experiment with. Now, it's not necessarily going to sound better. It's not a magic bullet. Um, but it, it can be fantastic. So let me, can we hear that do the same thing again with some, some gain on, maybe with the Les Paul? Sure. Right, so I've got the compressor is now at nine volts. Yep. Going into King of Tone and then into the timeline, bit of delay. Yep. Then we're going to change the voltage of the compressor to the same thing. Okay. Okay, so. We'll, we'll talk in between so that it, um, yeah. Dan was Dan was veering off into his special little place there, where the sound kind of grabs him, and hmm. and off you go. Yeah, clear, 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 clear from where I'm sat. Yeah, more dynamic range, more clarity in notes, which is important to say is neither a good nor a bad thing. It's just if you want that, yes, it's another way to achieve it. Yep, definitely. Similarly, I don't suppose you're going to be running your pedals at 18 volts and bring them down to nine. That's not going to happen, is it? No, no. <laughs> well, if you've got a pedal that's designed at 18 volts, 9 volts will probably turn it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so let's recap then. We came up with a very handy... Vicap... 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 Didn't we? We did. Voltage. Voltage. Current. Polarity. Isolation. Yeah. There, there you go. go. That is all you need to know about power supplies. The other questions that you're going to have are, why can't I power my DL4 off a blah, blah, blah? Why can't I, why can't I power my electro harmonics thing off a standard power supply? Those, mm -hmm. those are the next questions you're going to have. And the answers are because of voltage, voltage. current, polarity. And isolation. Well, OK, yeah. It had, so isolation has to be a part of that. You can have, as we displayed with the timeline, you can have the right voltage, the right current, the right polarity, but unless it's isolated, it can cause issues. Yeah. Electro harmonics pedals are a really good example. Um, you know, they can be the the original Memory Man, um, twenty four volts. It doesn't take crazy amounts of current. It's an analog pedal, but you know, it's it's a hundred and something milliamps, but twenty four volts. Um, the plug size is 2.5 millimeter and it's center positive. It's everything wrong. Everything is different about it. Yeah. If you get one of those things wrong, it's not going to work. Not gonna work. <laughs> you know? So, as long as, but that's exactly right, as long as the pedal has the right voltage, the right current, the right power, no, the right <laughs> voltage, the right current, the right polarity, and with polarity, I'm going to include plug size. Yeah. Because we've got 2.1 is the general, like 95% of all pedals. Like a boss style, they boss call style, it. Yeah, 2.1 yeah. millimeter center negative. 
but sometimes they can be 2.5 millimeter. The, the Line 60 L4 is 2.5 millimeter. The Eventide pedals are 2.5 millimeter, and things like the uh, jack sockets, can't you? My, you get yeah, you get the different tube screamers got jack socket. Uh, yeah, so they're mini jacks. Yeah, and now yeah, so you know those the P stands for polarity and plugs. All right, <laughs> so you got to get those right. So Vic P. <laughs> And but the isolation is also really important yep. because if you get the isolation, if you get those three right, get the isolation wrong, you could have a noisy pedal board. Mm. You get all four of them right, and that's why when we've got two amplifiers running here, we've got a lot of gain going on the pedal board, lots going on. No noise. No noise. Which may segue into another video we're going to do on noise, but... There's lots of other things about noise. Yeah. This is a big part of it. And this is a really good way to cure a load of those noise problems, get your power sorted out. Yeah. And unfortunately, here comes the bad news. When you're looking at, uh, if you've got lots of different pedals and they require different voltages and uh, plenty of current, there is no cheap way to do it. No cheap way to do it properly. Exactly. Yeah. So you skimp on the power supply um, because you've spent all your money on pedals and guitar strings and stuff like that. Absolutely as you would expect. Unfortunately, if you look at all of those, if you look at our VicP uh, acronym and you get every one of those things right for all of your pedals, the answer is quite expensive. It can be. It is though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It just is. But you wouldn't... I'm trying to look for an analogy The thing here. is, okay, the technology that goes into doing this properly is expensive. Mm. It's just that simple. If you have a real simple pedal board, and that, the other thing is there are going to be guys commenting now, I guarantee you, to say, I've been running this with Daisy Chains for years, I've never had a problem. And it's fine. Which is awesome. And lots of pedals do run fine from Daisy Chains. But, you know, what will happen is the Daisy Chain thing will sound different from one venue to the next as far as noise is concerned. Yeah. The... Doing it properly, it just takes away yeah. any of those, you know, dramas. And also, isolated pedals, I think, sound better. <laughs> I, I really do. I think when you isolate pedals properly, they're, they're running as they were intended to run, and they just sound... It's not that hard to, to, hard to understand, is it? You'll isolate... I mean, if you've got a really good loop switcher, you're... Isolating them in terms of signal. Yes. So why not isolate them in terms of power That's as well? That's right. The other thing, I'll just quickly mention this, right? So I've got here, my good mate, um, Dan Whitlock-Jones made this for me. This is a uh, copy, basically, of Dallas Range Master Triple Booster. Yeah. It uses a germanium transistor. Now, the two sorts of transistors, PMP and NPN, all right? Um, this uses a PMP is that transistor. with polarity or something? Yes, that's yeah, right. Okay. So, because positive, negative, positive, that's right. negative, positive, negative. That's right. So, of all the years in talking about PMP and NPN germanium transistors, I've only just worked that out. <laughs> what happens um, if you try and run this on a shared power supply? Is it's short? It's it will destroy the pedal. Right. It will destroy the transistor. So this absolute, this, it's why pedals on a, like on, this. Like on a daisy chain, you mean? On a daisy chain. Yeah. On a daisy chain. It's why a lot of guys who build these sorts of pedals do not include uh, okay. an input for the, for the um, power supply. Because on the, if, you, if you plug the wrong, wrong thing in, you blow it up. Now, there's a battery in there. You can hear it rolling around. These sorts of things, that, and germanium fuzz faces and things like that, they take... A tiny, tiny bit of current. Like nine milliamps. Or, or even less. Oh, really? Like four. Oh, okay. What takes the current is the LED. Yeah. It takes, will take actually more than the transistor. <laughs> um, but I've had this and I've been using it um, for a couple of months, you know, gigs where it's just been left on on the board, and it's still no problem. Still working. Um, <laughs> obviously, you can, there are products available that will power this, like, virtual battery and things that we do that mimics the way that a battery delivers current and it's the same technology we use in the isolators and all that sort of stuff as long as it receives an isolated power supply it will be fine but if you try and do it with a daisy chain 
you can destroy the pedal. So that's why, again, the isolation thing is so important to get right. There we go. I don't think that was too bad. The number of people, so uh, I worked on guitar magazines for nearly 20 years. Wrote the technical pages in those ma in those magazines. You don't look old enough to have worked on guitar magazines for 20 years. Nearly 20 years. Okay. Nearly 20 years. Actually, to be fair, I started when I was 22. Did you? Yeah. There you go. 21. 22. Um, and no matter who I talk to, they're like, oh, I just don't understand power f for my pedals. It's not hard. No, it really isn't. Voltage, current, polarity, isolation. There we go. If you sort those out for each of your pedals, happy days. You're golden. There we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. I think there was something in there for everyone. <laughs> Not much playing this week, but hey. There we go. But uh, yeah, we'll see you next week, guys. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye.